Hello friends and family, and welcome to the Saturday edition of our boring meditation stuff. Today, I wanted to follow on to an idea that I brought up two days ago um, with respect to this idea of meditation being rest or restful. And I wanted to be a little more specific about it in terms of um, whether meditation is an escape or whether it's something else. And at least specifically with Anapana and Vipassana meditation, you will find that meditation is a, it is a road, it is a window, it is a tool for facing your demons, whatever they happen to be. Those demons can be big or small, and the tool with which you approach your demons will kind of determine uh, how large a demon you're facing. <laughs> um, people often think about the monastics, the, the monks and the nuns, as uh, they're described uh, as um, living a reclusive lifestyle, solitary lifestyle. Um, and it's easy to think of that as a sort of escape. Well, let me escape from all the world's problems. Let me escape from politics and fear and hatred and racism and everything else um, that humanity has to deal with. But a person finds very quickly in meditation that these problems for an individual do not come from outside. So Yes, there is racism. Yes, there is sexism. Um, there are all sorts of other forms of negativity in the world. But they don't evaporate just because you're alone in the woods. A monk or a nun who goes into the woods, who goes into seclusion, has to deal with all of these same problems but head on. There's nowhere to go. So in our world, in the world of you know, householders, lay people, <laughs> us regular types with jobs as um, teachers and computer programmers and bankers and scientists we see the problems of the world and we can point to them and we can say well okay that's out there we can say there's some problem with that politician or we can say there's some problem with that person with that attitude with that ideology with this structure with this economy and we can externalize the problem. A monk or a nun cannot do that. A monk or a nun sitting under the foot of a tree, eyes closed in meditation, whatever problem comes into their mind is their own and they have to face it. And some of those can be very unpleasant. And that is what is meant by this idea of facing your demons. You face them head on because there's nowhere to go. You can, you can escape back into the world. If you want to open your eyes, stand up from the foot of the tree, run back into town, ditch your monk robes and uh, head into the pub, you could do that. <laughs> that is still an option. But you're running away. That's running away. Running to the pub is running away. Watching a movie is running away. Facing the problem head on 
is to stay at the bottom of the tree, eyes closed, and dealing with whatever it is that happens to be arising in your mind as an individual. Anapana meditation gives you a tool, generally, for dealing with the small demons. Some of them are very big, no doubt. There, there, there are big demons which can emerge in Anapana meditation. Um, but Anapana meditation, on the whole, will largely help you deal with the first steps um, of this process of, of facing these demons head on. And um, the demons themselves will tend to get smaller as time goes on, as, as you meditate more. Um, big demons will come back, <laughs> but you'll know how to deal with them. Um, Vipassana meditation for two reasons, right? First of all, because you can only learn it in a 10-day window. You have to sit down and meditate for 100 hours, very seriously. Um, so that alone is, is a significant challenge. 10 days, 100 hours of Anapana meditation would also be a significant challenge. There's no doubt about that. But Vipassana meditation also goes a step further. And it sort of says, well, okay, this mind-body complex, break it open and get the stuff out. And that is difficult. It is more difficult than Anapana meditation. It is more serious than Anapana meditation. And um, depending on what sort of internal demons you would like to face, <laughs> you can choose these tools appropriately. Um, and you can experiment with them appropriately. So you can give more time to Anapana meditation if you feel it is not time for you to explore Vipassana meditation yet. Um, at some point, I would recommend taking the leap and trying it. Uh, but um, Anapana meditation can also be thought of as a natural precursor to Vipassana meditation. If you continue to meditate Anapana meditation seriously, patiently, diligently, it will become Vipassana meditation. Uh, the meditation itself will change on its own. I've never experienced this, but monks who live completely in seclusion they may go into the forest for five years and not see anyone. Um, they describe this effect of anapana meditation becoming vipassana meditation. You stop meditating on the breath and you begin to meditate on the body exclusively. Um, and it's a natural occurrence. So in that sense, there's no harm in working with anapana meditation for as long and as seriously as you like. Um, but in both cases, it's worth identifying this idea that meditation is not an escape. In fact, it is really the only thing which is not an escape. It's pointing the finger inward, not to guilt yourself or accuse yourself of anything, <laughs> but rather than pointing the finger outward at external forces, other people, other events, other agents, you're looking inward instead and saying, maybe the problem is here and let me deal with it directly. All right, I'll try to come up with a less serious sounding topic for Sunday. <laughs> I, I hope everyone is, um, is taking good care of themselves and everyone around them. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a good weekend. Goodbye.